Hey guys, Paul Wilson here. Um, I've been playing around with the Adobe Ink and Slide uh, devices for um, about a week now, I guess I would say, and I thought it'd be time to share my experience with you guys and let you know my overall impressions. Uh, first off, uh, although I've already done an unboxing, let me quickly say that uh, what comes with this uh, this stylus, this is the stylus itself here. Uh, as you can see, it's just a pretty standard stylus. What's interesting about it, and I don't know if I can get a close-up that, that illustrates this, that sort of a twisted triangle effect here. Um, I know my cameras probably don't do it justice, but some interesting uh, interesting stuff here. The stylus itself has a single button on it. It's a very fine tip. It's not a soft plastic or soft rubber like you would expect, but rather a hard, fine tip. The button here, of course, will turn the device on, and you'll know the device is on because, of course, you'll get this neat little uh, rainbow effect on the bottom here. might not happen because I think I've already turned it on. Um, and, of course, uh, synchronizing is very easily done within the Adobe apps themselves. Included with the stylus, of course, is a charging base here. It's got a micro USB on the bottom. And this actually is a uh, magnetic uh, connection with the stylus. So when you pop the stylus in there, there are three conductors around the edge of the, of the rear end of the stylus that will make contact with uh, some conductors that are inside here. And you'll hear sort of a little click. It's a magnetic click that occurs when uh, when you've made contact. And also, this space makes an excellent cap for the storage tube that you see here, which is also you know quite stylishly uh, branded as well. Obviously, if I was going to throw this in a laptop bag, I feel more confident uh, that the stylus is well protected here. And uh, but this can also be your charging scenario as well. You can pop in the supplied USB cable and you're good to go. You can plug this into a power brick or into a, a spare USB port on your uh, your laptop or other computer and um, and you're good to go here. Um, along with the um, with the stylus is this device here and this is the adobe slide and as you can see here adobe slide is essentially a ruler a digital ruler there's no battery inside adobe slide it just sort of functions um, how it works is sort of the same way that the fingers work on a capacitive touch screen there are several capacitive touch points on here and while there is a button that will allow you to cycle through some of the choices that are available to you, all this really does is it uh, changes the configuration of the capacitive touch points that are located on the bottom of the slide. Let's get into how it works a little bit here. I'm going to use it with my iPad. There are two apps that are available. Uh, there is Adobe Sketch and Adobe Draw. You can use it with other stylus type apps and I'll show you a little bit of that today. But these two apps are designed specifically um, to be used with uh, Adobe Ink. You don't need Adobe Ink to use these two apps but they are definitely designed to work together. Let's start off with Adobe Sketch. I'm going to go in here and create a new project. And when you first set up your uh, Adobe Ink, you're going to want to, of course, select Stylus from the Settings area. And, of course, you can hold down your stylus on this touch point here, and it will connect through Bluetooth to the stylus itself. It's already done so for me. But as you can see here, it identifies Adobe Ink as being the connected stylus. Battery power looks good. Uh, you can, of course, uh, turn on or off palm rejection. I recommend turning palm rejection on because when you're normally using it, your palm might touch the screen. And, of course, you don't want any stray marks because of that. 
uh, also you will have an opportunity to configure whether you're left-handed or right-handed and how you prefer to hold your stylus which may change like in a circumstance like this um, you know I'm obviously using the stylus uh, off to one side so I probably would normally choose this here but of course now I can choose this item here and get started so I can select my brushes or my pencils from the side here uh, one of the big uh, differences with uh, with this versus um, non-powered styluses is that there is pressure sensitivity so if I choose this item here for example and I start off light and start to press harder you can see the line gets thicker uh, probably a little bit more noticeable on one of the brushes uh, if I start this and then press harder, of course, that uh, paintbrush becomes a little bit more predominant. Of course, you can uh, erase anything. You can use the eraser tool much like you would. It's not on the back side of the stylus like it is with some others. Uh, but if you wish to completely undo a previous stroke, you can just simply do this. And that works just as well. When you select uh, your brushes, if you tap a second time, you'll have an opportunity to uh, select the, the thickness of the brush, uh, the intensity, like how much pressure is being applied by default. So uh, if you lower this, it's a much more subtle effect, as you can see here, almost like a watercolor. And of course, you can choose uh, or change the color of any of these brushes here. There's often other settings as well. Uh, you can go in and, and make changes depending on the brush, of course, um, whether you want pressure dynamics turned on, the size of the brush, the flow, um, velocity dynamics, and so on. And of course, some of these settings will be different from one brush to the next. When you're using something like the, uh, the watercolor brush, if I, let's increase the intensity a bit here and I just, create a whole bunch of uh, virtual paint on here, you'll notice that it continues to bleed out, much like real water color would. And down here, of course, is a fan that I can turn on to essentially dry my sheet of paper, which is kind of an interesting idea when you think about it. So it gives you that, that really neat kind of uh, blended effect. Looking at the other app, of course, uh, Adobe Draw, they're both very similar to one another. The differences are uh, fairly minor. Um, there are a lot more choices of format, but you know, you have the standard set of brushes. Uh, my understanding, and I could be mistaken, of course, if you know differently, by all means, put the, uh, the you know, the comments in the video below uh, or in the description below. But my understanding is that with a dro a Adobe Draw, your output is going to be more vector graphics based. Uh, again, I could be mistaken. Sketch is more of a, a bitmap creation uh, uh, tool, and this is a little bit different in this regard. Um, one of the other things that, uh, that it does work with, of course, is other note-taking or drawing apps. As you can see here, uh, here's some examples of me trying it with uh, Apple's Note application. Uh, and of course, you, you can do just about anything you can uh, with others. But one of the differences, of course, is that uh, with a new note here, let's switch to uh, stylus mode here. If I do select a pencil, for example, uh, it's not pressure sensitive. So although this, this tool does have the pressure sensitivity, uh, there's nothing that communicates with this particular app as to whether it's pressure sensitive or not. So we can go back to the home screen. I've tried to use it also with Adobe Capture CC. So, you know, if you're playing around with your brushes, you of course can use it with that as well. And uh, I also find it actually pretty useful for Adobe Captivate Draft. Uh, obviously, what I do is uh, I work in the e-learning industry and the ability to edit, uh, you know, my, my, my Adobe Captivate Draft projects uh, while I'm using my iPad out on the go has certain advantages. 
And of course, with my hands, you know, as I'm doing gestures, I'm blocking the screen from view. But a stylus is a little bit better that way. So if I wish to add a video, for example, I can do so quite easily. Or if I wanted to make an audio recording, I can clearly see what I'm tapping or, or gesturing on the screen. So overall, it's, uh, it's a pretty neat product. I'll be honest, though, with you. Uh, back in 2014 when this was released this was a 200 dollars stylus and um you know obviously it, it has many benefits over other styluses or style i i'm not sure what the correct word is um but i can't imagine that i would ever spend 200 dollars for a stylus device especially when uh, there are certainly many alternatives out there maybe not all pressure sensitive maybe not all completely compatible with the Adobe apps, um, but uh, you know, this is a very expensive stylus, uh, or it was a very expensive stylus when it came out. Um, but what I did find uh, a few weeks ago was that this was listed on Amazon for $25. And actually I'll put a link in the description below. So if you guys wanna take advantage of it, um, so my recommendation would be if you have need to do some illustrations, some drawing, and also use it with your, with your regular Adobe apps, such as Adobe Captivate Draft, um, then definitely buy it at $25. Uh, again, I don't think I would have if it was $200, uh, but you know, I'm very happy that I purchased it. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.